The new Asus Strix G15 and Radeon RX 6800M graphics are being held back by memory. I've tested this new gaming laptop in 13 different games, both with its stock memory and with my own memory, to show you just how much performance is being left on the table. And I've also compared it against other gaming laptops so you can see how well the 6800M stacks up against NVIDIA. These are the specs of my Strix G15. I've got the Ryzen 9 5900HX CPU, RX 6800M graphics, 16 gigs of memory, and a 300Hz 1080p screen. But there is also also a 1440p option. You can check out other spec models as well as updated prices with the links down in the description. So why have I spent extra time testing out this laptop with two different sets of memory? To cut a long story short, I found that the Strix G15 uses the same memory as the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro. And as I covered in this dedicated video, the memory that it ships with isn't exactly amazing. Both memory kits tested in the Strix G15 have two 8GB sticks in dual channel, both run at DDR4 3200CL22, and both are single rank. The difference is that my kit is one RX with lower secondary timings compared to the One RX16 kit that the laptop comes with. It's kind of annoying because these sorts of memory details aren't listed anywhere on the spec sheet when you actually go to buy a laptop. So the only way you could know is by watching videos like this one. I asked ASUS why they were using it and was basically told supply issues. Which sucks because this simple change can make a bigger difference compared to buying a more expensive laptop with a more expensive GPU. Now gaming laptops like this that use both AMD processors and graphics make use of SmartShift, which is similar to Nvidia's Dynamic Boost. The basic idea is that power is shifted between the CPU and GPU as needed based on the workload to offer optimal performance. In a GPU only stress test, I found that my 6800M would run up to about 150 watts, but 145 was more common. And then with the CPU also active in stress test, the GPU would run at about 115 watts. The ASUS Armory Crate software lets us pick different performance modes. I've done all testing with manual mode because it lets me max out power and fan speed for best results. Unfortunately, there's no mock switch, so it's not possible to disable the integrated graphics for a speed boost in games. But we can connect an external display which will connect directly to the RX 6800M graphics. I've tested this too, and as you'll see, the results are very impressive. But before we continue, I've got to tell you about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. I'm always looking to improve the videos that I'm making on the channel, which is why I'm currently watching Video for Instagram tell an engaging story in less than a minute by Halise. Sure, my focus is on YouTube, but being able to get information across quickly in video is what I'm all about. Skillshare has lots of other classes for you to explore and improve yourself by learning something new. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And after that, it's only around $10 a month. Whether you're looking to fend off boredom, focus on self-care through creativity, or join a similarly creative community, Skillshare is the place to keep you learning. Alright, let's find out how well this laptop performs in 13 different games with its stock memory and with my memory. After that, we'll see how the 6800M compares against other laptops, and then I'll use an external screen to push it to the limit. Cyberpunk 2077 was tested in Little China with a Street Kid Life Path. I've got the stock RAM shown by the red bars, and the new RAM shown by the purple bars. With ray tracing presets, there's basically no difference. Probably because we're so GPU heavy here. But at the same time, the frame rates with ray tracing on the 6800M in this game aren't great. It's behind the NVIDIA options because I usually test with DLSS, and AMD's FSR isn't here yet. Otherwise, the new RAM offers a 21% boost to average FPS at low settings. Red Dead Redemption 2 was tested with the game's benchmark. Again, a much smaller difference at max setting levels here when compared to lower presets. Basically, no change at ultra settings, while the new RAM was offering a 14% boost to average FPS at low settings. Call of Duty Warzone was tested with either all settings at minimum or maximum as it doesn't have predefined setting presets. This game saw the biggest difference with the new RAM at max settings out of all 13 games tested, with a 24% higher average frame rate. Quite a big improvement for such a simple change. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was tested with the game's benchmark, and this game had the largest difference out of all 13 titles tested at lowest settings, with the new memory offering 28% higher average FPS, or 30 FPS in this case. Max settings also saw a massive 19% improvement. For control, I've tested with ray tracing enabled and disabled. Let's start with it off. Again, basically no difference at the highest setting, but this is a GPU heavy game, so makes sense. While low settings was reaching 10% higher average FPS with the new memory. Like we saw in Cyberpunk, there's almost no difference with ray tracing enabled. And again, the frame rates aren't great here because I usually test with DLSS on Nvidia laptops. Assassin's Creed Valhalla was tested with the game's benchmark, and although the new memory was offering a 5% or so boost to average FPS, it's below average out of the 13 games tested and on the lower side. Microsoft Flight Simulator was a more middle of the pack result, close to the 13 game average in its differences. Now, max settings was technically reaching 9% higher average FPS, 
us, but we can see this is just three frames. So we've got to be careful when dealing with percentage values. 9% sounds nice, but 3 FPS, not so much. The gains in Watch Dogs Legion were bigger, a massive 25% boost to average FPS at low settings, which in this case is almost 20 FPS, much more noticeable I'd argue, while max settings was about 14% higher with the new RAM, or about 8 FPS in this case, though there's a larger 21% boost to 1% low at Ultra. Reasonable gains in Battlefield 5 too, about 10 FPS at max settings or about 9%, right in line with the 13 game average, while low settings was 15% higher with the new RAM, presumably as processor performance and memory matter more there. Fortnite was tested with the same replay file with each memory configuration, and the differences in average FPS were below the 13 game average, but hey, in a more competitive game like this, you could argue that every frame counts more compared to some of the others. The same goes for CSGO, although all setting levels were scoring basically the same in terms of average FPS, the new memory was offering at least an 8% boost to average FPS. This game generally gets bottlenecked by the iGPU, so using an external screen should increase frame rate dramatically. More on that soon. Rainbow Six Siege had much larger improvements to the 1% low performance with the new memory compared to the average frame rates. Max settings were hitting 7% higher average FPS with the new memory, while the 1% low gains were higher at 21%. The Witcher 3 doesn't really need high frame rates, and honestly even the stock RAM at ultra settings is still giving excellent results with this modern hardware on an older game, but we can improve average FPS by 6% at max settings, or 14% at minimum settings by changing memory. These are the differences between the stock RAM and my new RAM in all 13 games tested at the highest setting levels available. On average, the new RAM was able to offer us a 9% boost to average FPS in games. Some titles like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Cyberpunk saw basically no difference, probably because they're GPU bound there, while others like Warzone had big gains. I've also compared with all settings at the lowest preset, and now the average difference with the new memory is closer to 15%. Even in the worst case, we're looking at at least a 6% improvement to average FPS, with well above 20% gains possible depending on the specific game. Now let's find out how well this all AMD configuration of ASUS Strix G15 compares against others. I've tested Battlefield 5 in campaign mode at ultra settings, and the Strix G15 is highlighted in red. I've got both the stock memory and the new memory results, which in this case offers a 9% boost to average FPS. The 6800M can beat the lower power limit 3070 in the Omen 15 with the memory upgrade and is close to 2080 Max-Q options, though the 1% lows with the Radeon GPU seem lower compared to most others, whether or not we change the memory. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was tested with the game's benchmark with the highest setting preset. As we saw earlier, this game had one of the biggest differences out of all titles tested with the memory upgrade, almost a 19% boost to average FPS. The Strix G15 can compete with RTX 3070 and 3080 machines with the new memory like AMD was claiming, while the stock memory puts it closer to the 3060 and under the power limited 3070 in the Omen 15. Far Cry 5 was also tested with the game's benchmark at max settings, and this test typically depends more on processor performance. The new memory was offering an 11% boost to average FPS here, again moving the Strix G15 closer to some of the Ryzen plus Nvidia 3070 and 3080 options, such as the Asus Scar 15 which is right above it with the same processor but RTX 3080 GPU. I've confirmed that many other reviewers that have this laptop for testing have the same memory as me, so the results other channels have shown could be improved too. And I did also confirm with ASUS that the stock memory in my unit is what the retail model will actually ship with if you go to buy this model. It's not just the review units that are like this. As mentioned, there's no way of disabling the integrated graphics with a laptop screen, but if you connect an external monitor to the Type-C port on the back, it connects directly to the 6800M, bypassing the GPU. I've got the results with an external screen connected shown by the green bars, and I've tested it both with stock memory and with my memory. With the stock memory and external screen, we're just a couple of FPS behind the RAM upgrade plus laptop screen. If we both combine external screen with the RAM upgrade, the performance uplift is nothing short of astonishing. It's just a few FPS behind MSI's larger and much more expensive GE76, though this is just a single game. I don't think I've ever had an all AMD laptop with both AMD processor and graphics that lets you disable the iGPU. Now at the same time, there also haven't been a whole lot of all AMD laptops. So now that there are higher end options coming, it's possible that this feature is still yet to come, I'm not sure yet. At the very least though, it's unfortunate that this feature is not present in the Strix G15, because as we've just seen, we can get an exceptional performance increase with it. I'll cover thermals and everything else about this laptop in the upcoming full review, so make sure you're subscribed for that one. Now let's check out the screen response time. The ASUS Armory Crate software gives us the option of enabling or disabling panel overdrive, which affects screen response time. With overdrive disabled, we're looking at a 7.9 millisecond average greater gray response time, but we can lower this down to around 5.6 milliseconds with overdrive enabled 
enabled, which is the default, though this does add a bit of overshoot. I've got a link in the description if you need an explanation on what all these numbers mean. Although it's not the slowest 300Hz screen I've tested, looking at you MSI GE66, it's not below the 3.33 milliseconds needed for transitions to occur within the refresh window. In any case, not too bad compared to others, but could be better, and expect different results with the 1440p screen option. There's a lot more that we need to discuss about the ASUS Strix G15 Advantage Edition, so make sure you're subscribed for the upcoming full review. Come and join me in Discord and get behind the scenes videos by supporting the channel on Patreon. And if you need more information on why the memory upgrade improves performance so much, check out this video over here, as I've gone into it in depth on the Legion 5 Pro. It uses the exact same memory as the Strix G15 by default, so all the details are covered in that one. I'll see you there next.